What a spring we are having. Hard to predict. I tell you, we have some strange things happening on our forecast here. I'll give you some information on some early morels, as well as the spotty smelt dipping, which may be heated up this weekend. I tell you, get out your smelt net. We're going to head towards Tawas right now and show you what smelt dipping is like. Well, it's Friday night. The crowds are lined up at the dock here at Tawas smelt dipping. How you folks doing? Great. Great, are you? Yep. Well, let's see. You got any of these smelt here? Yeah, those ones are. Good. These are yours? Yeah. Come on up here. Let's take a look at them. These are the first smelt of the evening we've seen. We got some, right? Oh, <laughs> so let's swing over here. Oh, look at this right here. Coming in. You lost more than you got there? Yeah. Hey, that's a pretty nice one right here. Look at that. Oh, well, you've done real well. You're, you, you've been the luckiest ones well, here so far. <laughs> that's not all mine. There's three of us dipping and dumping them in there. So. What, what's your name? Jim Barrow. Where are you from? Chesney. Chesney. Okay, well, let's take a look at this net here just a second, if you don't mind. I know you're in a rush to get it back in the water, but uh, this is just a minnow type of... Oh, it's homemade, yeah. This is a homemade yeah. job. We bought the material and just made them up ourselves. Okay, and what, what he's doing here, this is what they do off the docks here at Tawas. He has a, well, I don't know, where'd you buy this, L.L. Bean? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Right in, right in the backwoods. <laughs> right in the backwoods to his homemade net. And he's, come over here and see if we can see, O.J., if we can. Go ahead, drop it down there. And what he does is he lays it right on the bottom here. Oh, yeah, there's the light we need. Is yeah, that the light you need, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, keep it up. <laughs> okay, now the smelter attracted here by the lights, I think, along the dock. We're in about, what is that, six, eight feet of water? Yeah, seven oh. feet of water, yeah. Now we're waiting for the smelt to swim by. I don't know what the chances are right now here with the cameras. It always seems like we don't bring the best of luck, <laughs> but you can't tell. Did a good job for us. Bob Garner is down at the end of the dock. In fact, he's talking to some fishermen down there who are fishing with hook and line. Let's see how they're doing. We do have a little fishing action here down at this end of the dock, kind of some unusual action. Frank and Damon Beardsley are here from Fenton, and you've got a Menominee whitefish. Right. I caught it about an hour ago on a night crawler. And, now, uh, what were you fishing for, though? Well, anything that bites. Uh, <laughs> we're just up here to have some fun, catch some fish, and see what we can do. I guess you had some, uh, some uh, problem over uh, finding out the identity of it. Yeah, well, I didn't know what the thing was, and I was ready to throw it back when somebody told me that it was a Menominee and that it was good eating, so I kept it. Well, they're coming in just like, uh, just like this melt and other fish are right now, this time of the year to spawn. It's going to be a tremendous eating fish. Let's go over to the other side of the dock and see if Fred's doing any good over there. Well, we have a fella here who just came directly from the parking lot of what grocery store? Oh, oh I see. This is covered up. He has a shopping cart that he acquired somewhere. Yeah. He has a battery here. <laughs> He's fishing with a two-by-four with some cables to it, and here's a switch right there. And you flip it on and off. And can you see in the water here, O.J.? Come on down and look at his net. He has his net laying on the bottom like everybody else with one exception. Go ahead and flip it on and off there a second. See that? Now, that light... Uh, is attracting smelt or just enabling you to see him? I would say more or less just to see him. Just to see him? I would say. You know, if this works, we're going to have a lot of people switching to your method. <laughs> I imagine there would be. How's it worked so far? Pretty good. Okay. We're going to dip some right now? Yeah. You got some? Oh, hold on. We have some action. You turn the light off when the smelt get in there? Yeah. Here they come. Missed. Oh, you missed. We got, we got any down there? A couple? What's that? Do you have a question? Um, when's the show going to be on? This one? Uh -huh. Right now? Okay, it's Friday night now, right? Okay, next Thursday it's going to be on, on all the public TV stations around the state. You ever watch Michigan Outdoors? Okay, why don't you tell the folks that this is going to be on Thursday night and it's time for Michigan Outdoors. This is going to be on Thursday night. But, and it's time for what? Michigan Outdoors. All right. From the rugged shore and woodlands of the north, it's history of copper mines and iron ore, the Great Lakes fisheries. To the farmlands of the southern counties, we'll look around again, and all that waits the sportsman in the state of Michigan. It's like Christmas time down here at Singing Bridge. You can't hardly believe it. There's a lot of traffic. The stores are packed full. People all over the place. Seems to be all kinds of people interested in smelt. But there doesn't seem to be just a lot of smelt yet this no, evening. Not yet, eh? Okay, well, who we got here? James Perry from Pontiac. Albert Perry from Pontiac. Okay, tip, the, tip that bucket up and let's take a look. Just a, just a few smelt over here. 
Okay. We got some more over here, though. Who we got? Pardon? What's your name there? Oh, Manfred Meyer from Bay City. You're from Bay City, and who's this? This Tom is Meyer. My son, Tom. Okay, yeah. let's, uh, let's tip up that pail and take a look there. Just bad. just a few. The heavy runs haven't really begun yet, or maybe they have. Let's uh, let's go down and see what Fred and Kathy are up to. Well, Bob, we're right down here in the middle of the fracas. I mean, this you know what smelt dipping is all about. This, there are serious smelt dippers. I don't know if we've run into any yet. Have we got No, <laughs> lots of good stones. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's party time down here at Singing Bridge. But we are there are a number of people out here who are trying. And Kathy, why don't you explain the technique that we're using? Okay, I'm going downstream here, actually, with the current. Yeah, the smell are hopefully going this way. That's right. They're going up to spawn right, right. now. You're using, let's show the net. This is the most popular type of net to use right here, the wire mesh. And you did pick up a few stones. Yeah, like I said, can we cook them? Uh, no, not the stones. <laughs> but that is good because you should be skimming along the bottom. So, Kathy, we'll just keep dipping here, and there's no telling when the smelt are going to be on their way up. They're on their spawning runs, Kath. And they're going to go up here tonight. All the, all the ones that come up here are going to be spawning, and they'll lay between 20 and 70,000 eggs. Per little smelt. Per little smelt, each one of them. Yeah. They lay them out in the water. The, the eggs are loose, and they don't lay them in a cluster. They don't put them in a bed. A group of smelt will spawn together, and the eggs will float downstream, but they're sticky, so they'll stick to the rocks and stick to the twigs and things in the water. And they'll hatch out in about three weeks. But the smelt that lay their eggs tonight will be coming back downstream towards the open water here yet tonight. On one night. That's right. And, you know, we could be dipping until 5, 6 in the morning and still get smelt. Sure. Sound like a good idea? Well. Whoa. <laughs> Taking on a little water here. As I say, we're in the middle of the fracas here, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> now, hold it here. It's getting late, and you're telling me you... you you ladies haven't been out yet? We just got here. We just got here. Where from? Flint. Okay, now tell me your names. Pat Cummerford. And? Kay Caps. Okay, now, ladies, the smell aren't really running great yet. Do you want to reconsider this move of going down to the uh, river and dipping? No, we're going to go. You're going to go? We're going to go. You're going to, well, determination. You betcha, baby. <laughs> Since when did smelt dipping become a spectator sport? <laughs> right now. Well, right, right now. now. What for? <laughs> I'm waiting for him. <laughs> waiting for him? Well, well, somebody got something here. You did get a couple in there, too. Did you get those? Oh, no. What, are you spectators? Yeah, we're, uh, we're getting ready to put on our waders. We're going to go out there and check the water temperature. <laughs> okay, it's supposed to be between 42 and 44 degrees for these little critters. Yeah. Well, yeah. What do you think it is now? You were out there. It's probably about 41 or 45. Yeah, right. It's, <laughs> it's just a hair off. I know they're coming any minute. Okay, Stan and Bob have got a fine mess of smelt here, a fine catch. In fact, OJ, can you get, can you get a close-up uh, look at that? There seem to be three very small ones in here. Guys, what happened to the big ones? Well, the little ones put up a heck of a big fight, and uh, we just couldn't keep up with the big ones. Okay. <laughs> Well, look what I found. <laughs> what are you doing? Sleeping. Uh, well, how come this is smelt dipping time, you know? Where's the beef? Yeah, where's the smelt? <laughs> where's the smelt? Is that the problem? Yeah, no smelt. Well, you're just waiting then. Oh, what a rowdy crowd. So what are you guys doing? What does it look like? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the story here by the campfire. Okay, guys, where are your nets? Huh? They're in the car. In the car. Uh, how, about, how about your waiters? They're in the, the car. car. They're in the car, too. Okay. You don't seem to be really ready to go smelt dipping no, here. I'm going to wait for them to run. Yeah, what time is that going to happen? Oh, one, two o'clock in the morning. Okay. Now, do you want to tell our audience the only reason you showed up at Singing Bridge tonight? Let's get on Michigan Let's Outdoors. <laughs> do we have some great news, Kathy? You got one. I got one. Well, let's get it out here and take a look at this trophy. You want to look at that, a real smelt, guys. Yeah. Well, Bob and Fred are, or Adam are going to have to split this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Kev, go ahead and drop it in your bucket. Yeah, the run's on. Well, maybe that's a good omen here. I hope so. We haven't got a lot of smelt so far, but you know, with the camera's out, I don't think we're going to. Why is that? Well, it, it just happens that way. <laughs> All the I think time. we're going to have to put the cameras away. Okay. We've got to do some serious smelt dip and see All if right. we can't get something for our recipe. Let's get all of them. Let's do it. Okay. 
That was two years ago, and yes, we got a few smelt for the recipe. We have some smelt in the freezer for tonight, and we got these smelt that we're getting big ones. What does this mean for the, for the season on morels? Who knows, it could be lousy like the past couple years. The only thing we can do is keep our fingers crossed on the weather. By the way, in our uh, outdoor digester, we have the rules for our Stroh's Fishing Awards, and we have a category here for smelt. No one has ever entered a smelt. If you have an 11 inch smelt, uh, you will qualify. We had a fella a couple years ago when we were catfish fishing, bring us an 11 inch smelt, and this is what it looks like. Okay, it was fun out there on the river, catfish fishing. Denny, good time. we had a good time. You, you got nothing to show for it. Uh, Bob's got nothing to show <laughs> for it. Terry, we got nothing, nothing to show, show for it. I got nothing to show <laughs> for it. The only guy who caught a catfish was our man, Catman Charlie. But that isn't what really we're going to cap this show with. You had a fish that you told me about, you said is a, is a real winner. Yeah, we got a big smell out at Grand Haven this spring. What you heard on the show, uh, what did I say on the show? Uh, you said that reports were spotty on Lake Michigan and that uh, the big worms weren't really out there. So we, we got this one in the evening there and we thought we'd show it to you. You kept it in the freezer yes, until sir. now. Well, let's see it. Let's see this monster smelt. He's a little junior ready here. Oh, hey, look at the size of that. He, that... Goes, he goes 11 inches. He's 11 inch smelt. Let's He's got it. large teeth in him. Teeth, let's see. Probably sort of hard to see for the close-up in here, but this is a smelt. Well, he does have large teeth. Yes, he does. They're Boy, short. Yeah, he has a couple in the top there. Pretty old smelt, we figured. Wow, that's off Grand Haven, so that's kind of a hot spot? Yeah, it's been good dipping out there the last couple of years. We This season, we probably dipped about 30 gallons of them. Isn't that something? The man saves the day by having a smelt in the freezer. <laughs> now, how about that? Bigger than the catfish we caught. <laughs> it was, it was. We should pull that thing out here now. Well, that's a great smelt. Why don't you stand up there? Catfish Charlie, this is Catfish Charlie, who did his best tonight. Here we try on it. We're gonna call you Smelt Charlie from now on. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> DNR wildlife biologists expected only a 50% survival rate in the newly released crossbred pheasants, but after five weeks, roughly 70% of the birds are surviving in Huron County, and nearly 85% are surviving in Ottawa County. These pheasants are the first of the ringneck, blackneck crosses, the new strain introduced from China that hopefully will add new strength to our dwindling pheasant flock. So far, pheasant hunters and DNR biologists are elated that survival is way above expectations. 1986 will be the year for optimistic deer hunters to get that second chance. For both bow and gun hunters, a second bucks only tag will be available in the Lower Peninsula. In the UP, second bucks only tags are available only to rifle hunters. Why not to bow hunters? You'd have to ask the UP legislators who wanted bow hunters excluded from this new law. And this week's outdoor reminder, the first of Michigan's 1986 spring turkey seasons opens up this Monday, April 21st. Turkey is a wary, wary creature, Bob. Uh, bagging one during turkey season is a lot tougher than many people think. Yeah, you and I have had this argument, what's warier, the deer or the turkey? I'm still taking the turkey. Okay, well, I still take the deer. <laughs> okay. We have a question here, Bob, in the mailbag about bullheads. Yeah, from Tom Huffman of uh, North Muskegon. He writes, uh, he wants to know about getting stung by bullheads. Yeah, he said he was stung by one, and it lasted, the pain lasted about two hours, and what causes that? Well, the barbels, of course, those whiskers that hang from the mouth don't cause any stinging. They're harmless. They use that to smell with, but it's those pectoral fins, and on the dorsal fin, it's an actual spine in there. Notice C Catfish Charlie is holding that very carefully. There is no poison in freshwater catfish or in, in bullheads. No poison in those spines. What it is, it's a mucus that is that a lot of people have allergic reaction to, and they also pick up what bacteria from the bottom and things like mm -hmm. that. So it's actually more of an infection or an allergic reaction that people have to catfish and bullheads. But it's not a poison. I always thought it was a poison. I guess not. Just, a, just some sort of a More reaction. or less an, an allergy. Allergic, right. 
Another letter, too, for we got Fred from Alan Belts of Roseville, and he wants us to go back, or wants the DNR, rather, to go back to the old system of issuing metal kill tags for deer. Well, the tag's like this one right here. Uh, he feels that the tags look better, and he thinks that they'd be better for enforcement. Because, well, like here on the deer that, that we have on the walls of our cabin here, uh, this tag is wrapped around the antlers, and it appears that you couldn't get it off. So, uh -huh. in other words, once you tagged a deer with this metal tag, you'd have it for keeps. Those tags are absolutely a cinch to get off of. Uh, These old metal tags. Any, everybody and his brother knew how to how to take those off, and, uh, and so consequently, they weren't very good for enforcement. Now, what about these new plastic tags that once you poke that in, you can't get it oh, out? Oh, they use those for beaver and otter seals and also for second deer in the three areas that had a two deer limit. And once you poke them in, they are, they are tamper resistant. Nothing the department will ever come up with is tamper proof, but they're more tamper resistant. But the old paper tags, the ones that, that Alan was complaining about here, uh, they can't be used again. Once you punch this paper, right. it's punched for good. So it's likely that the DNR will stick to the, the paper back tags and not go back to the metal ones. Plus, they're easy for the dealers to handle, too. All right. Now let's see if you folks can answer this question in our outdoor quiz. The opossum has an amazingly short gestation period of 13 days. How many young are generally born, and how big are they? The opossum bears 16 to 17 young, weighing 1 17 hundredth of a pound. 20 would fit into a tablespoon. They climb into mama's pouch and emerge two months later about the size of mice. You know, Bob, the opossum and the wild turkey, I think, are, are neck and neck in a beauty contest. Oh, no, come on. Huh? Come on, that is low. One looks like a rat and one's glorious. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, the, the turkey is, to turkey hunters especially, who, who really uh, adore these birds, you know, almost worship them at this time of year, especially because their eyes are incredible as far as seeing any little movement. About ten times better than yours or mine. And they can see you if you scratch your nose <laughs> or you move or blink. Even blink. You know, you can see right here in the camera, you know, my eyes blinking like that. A turkey can see that a long ways off. Sure. Which sure is can. why you have to have some type of covering on your eye when you hunt turkey. But this, Bob, was your 21-pound gobbler that you got a couple years ago. That was my trophy bird. Perhaps the last one I'll ever take. And this full mount was done by Charlie Fanta. Let's, ta let's go back to the tape when Charlie was in the studio when you brought this bird in before it was mounted. Well, let's take a look at this Decent. bird. Nine and a half inch beard. Now, the head really doesn't look too good right now. This is a turkey that's been frozen. Uh, Bob got it Monday morning or just a little bit after seven. What are you going to do with this bird, Charlie? Well, we're going to mount it here for Bob. Um, how, how, how are you going to mount the head? The head's going to be reproduced. Uh, so usually. you're not going to use this? Skin no, effect. no, this skin is full of, full of tissue and blood here, and it tends mm -hmm. to dry up. So what we're going to do is make a cast of it and mm -hmm. uh, make an actual reproduction out of the head. Oh, of this actual head? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. And let me show you one thing right here. Uh, the way to take care of these birds after you shoot them is to carry some paper towel or some, mm -hmm. uh, some cotton with you. And after you get done shooting, you want to take a big wad of this stuff. And stick it right down into the into the throat. Into the mouth. Should you do this for any bird that this you get goes with? This goes with doesn't. Yeah, this goes with any type of bird. And what it does is it keeps any fluids or blood mm -hmm. from leaking out. And you can tell how these feathers here got kind of messed up. This mm -hmm. is all going to have to be washed off. Well, but, uh, Bob, that's we'll learn no that for next off. time. <laughs> Here's the beard, a nine and a half inch beard. This was quite a gobbler. You can see it right there. This is sort of it's like horse hair. Yeah, it's a modified feather, but it really mm -hmm. looks like hair. Okay, well you're going to have quite a job here. We're looking forward to. Seeing him out. Well, let's take a look at the tail. Yeah. Take a look at the tail. Geez, I had uh, I had all the fun, and Charlie's got all the work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there it oh, is. Look at that. Look at that a Michigan gobbler, 21 pounds, taken by Bob Garner. You're going to eat it too. You can you can save the oh, meat yeah. for Bob. We'll save the meat on this, no problem. Because to me, bird. nothing against taxidermy, Charlie. But if I would have got one, it would have been plucked. You would have had to reconstruct <laughs> no, the bird. No, no, don't pluck them. Don't pluck them. Not one that size. Okay. You know, after looking at this, though, Bob, I think I changed my mind. Look at the job that Charlie Fanta did. He won a, an award with this with the Michigan Taxidermist Association. He took, took a number two last year in the entire bird category. I don't know, 80, 90 taxidermists participating. It's wow. a phenomenal job. And the head on this it looks so real. Is a cast. A even Yeah, it's a cast, but these are all the original feathers that came out in the uh, cast. I don't understand how he did it. He worked I, some magic. He sure did. Well, anyway, that's a wrap-up on turkeys. We're going to have more on that next weekend. Mmm, mmm. <laughs> this is fried smelt, pan fried pan smelt. Pan fried smelt. Oh boy, I tell you, they are good, Kathy. Mm. Not deep fried. A lot of your smelt recipes called for deep frying. Mm -hmm. And 
this is a lot easier and I like it. Well, this does have a, you can see a, a breading, a rather thick crust on the outside. It isn't a heavy batter. No, absolutely not. Just a nice thin breading. Should be Bob Garner's favorite type. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. right, let's take a look at how you put these together, Kat. Go right ahead. This <laughs> recipe. Look at the size of those smell. I well, can't believe them. These were the UP smelt we got oh, last year with Pete Berger. I've never seen smelt that big. And they Oh, they're really, huge. They uh, are. They clean up nice too. They they weren't approaching eleven inches either, but there's some nice nine oh, fillet size. So. That's right, just about <laughs> seriously. Exactly. But the the meat is so so white and, and tender. moist. Very moist. They're not dried out at all. Well there's the array of ingredients. Bread crumbs and flour. We're gonna get a piece of wax paper because you're gonna put flour on it and your bread crumbs and mix it up. Salt and pepper. Yeah, well this is what stage one here, just That's with right. The flour. This is gonna keep everything adhered to this smelt. Get a couple eggs, you can mix it with two tablespoons of water. Just kind of stir it up good so that it's all broke up. You don't Why do it. you mix the water with the egg? It'll make it foamier. Hmm. If you didn't do that, it wouldn't foam much at all there. Mm -hmm. You could not add water, but it, it does stick it better. And then the final bread crumbs. touch of breadcrumbs. Right. A lot easier to pour them out of a box than to try to make <laughs> your try own. Then try to mash them up. <laughs> dry them first. And, and then you need a little rack of some type. Oh, these, these are going to dry. These are actually going to... The breadcrumbs are going to dry right onto the fish. You just follow my two-year-old around. You find plenty of breadcrumbs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, roll them in, in the, the flour, flour then in, in the, the egg, egg, then in the breadcrumbs. Right, and right. the flour will dry your fish out so that the egg will stick to it, so that then the breadcrumbs will stick mm -hmm. to it. And here's the twist. Let them sit on the rack for... About an hour. An hour? Right, and it really, all of a sudden, it just dries rather quickly. And you can pick those up, and the breadcrumbs will not come off. So you... They just stay right there on the fish. Mm-hmm. And that, that holds it together better when it's in the pan frying. Now, pan, pan frying is not deep frying. It's just no, in a little bit of butter. Right, there's hardly any oil in that, butter in that at all. And it doesn't take long. One of the things with smelt, people will tend to crowd them because they're small. Mm -hmm. But even at that, because they're small, you don't want to overdo it, put too many in at one time. And here they are. Bob, are you ready for another? Yeah, you know, you wouldn't have to eat 83 of these in order to have a complete meal. No. About, about uh, a dozen would, uh, would do it. Well, here's one that I have eaten half of, and you can see the backbone is still in there. Smelt that are larger like this, the backbone doesn't disintegrate as much, but they do come apart. You don't want to eat the backbone in these. No, not the smaller all. ones you can, you hey, can. I'm eating the backbone in these now, and, and it's n not working out too bad. Does, does that surprise <laughs> no, you, Kathy? Of course, I'm kind of a disposal <laughs> machine here. <laughs> but here we have some lemon. But I don't, I don't think this needs lemon or tartar sauce or anything. Doesn't need anything. Absolutely nothing. Just good finger food. A number one. A number That's one right. recipe. This is super. That is, and I'm surprised. This tastes better than when we tried it out about a week ago. Right. Well, Why is cooked that? a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer than. You don't, want to, you don't want to overcook fish, but make sure you cook these sufficiently. There we go, that tender white meat, Very white. pan fried smelts. Bob, where can our viewers get this great recipe? Here is possibly the last patch of snow, heralding the end of winter of 1985. Come on around here, OJ. We're going to scoop this up and put it right in the bucket. You want to get some of that, Pete? Wow. There we go. Gotta get the, the, off the, the last snowball of the season. Hey, that's just like glacier ice. Good. Keep your smell cold. Sure is. I wouldn't plan on folks who were going to be coming up here much past this to count on snow. No. <laughs> May 3rd. Not. May 3rd is just about it. That's right. Well, good. We have enough there, Pete? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, the smelter ice down. There you are. Now, the next thing, we can probably look for mosquitoes. Yep. You got mosquitoes <laughs> and snow at the same time.